Now let's compare and contrast the Alpha Curve brush we just went over in the last video with the Extrude Profile brushes, which are similar, uh, but different in a really cool way. So let's go ahead and grab another sphere, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make a poly mesh 3D, and now we have an object to draw something on. So again, if we go in here to BC2, which is Brush Curve Alpha, we can go ahead and select that. And for this one, let's go in here, let's go ahead and grab our stroke menu, white dot, drag it over here into this open docking station, go in here, hold down shift and open up all these curve options in here. And the very first thing I'm gonna do, open this curve fall off, and I'm gonna go ahead and say flip horizontal. What this is gonna allow us to do is go from very small to very big. So when I draw this out, we can see the profile that's being created. Now, just like we talked about before, you have to go in here. If I want a different alpha, I can go through here, choose a different alpha, click to update this, and then I'll get a new curve profile based on that alpha. Now, how it's creating this geometry, if you turn on polyframe, and let's go ahead and switch our material that's considered for and zoom in so we can see it. You're gonna see it's just taking this alpha profile and then filling it in with basically squares of geometry. So if we switch over to something very simple, like let's say, Alpha 14, it's just a circle. Go ahead and tap to update this curve. And now you're gonna see it creates the circle. It extrudes this circle down the path. However, the circle itself is just a bunch of squares. So let's say you wanted to control what type of geometry was being created and extruded down the path of the curve. And let's also say, instead of having to go in here and import alphas or create alphas and swap them out manually, what if, if we hit uh, the B key to bring up our brush menu and then choose the chisel rectangle, what if we had the option to go through here and change these out on the fly? You're gonna see as we go through the chisel rectangle brush, as I touch these different brushes up here, it's immediately updating the alpha. So instead of having to go in here to the alpha menu and swap it out, I can have an entire brush full of things to choose from. Well, you're in luck because there's a brush that's gonna do both of those things. And then if we wanna look at it, let's hit B, E, and we're gonna see the extrude profile uh, and the extrude profile two options available to us as brushes. So first what we're gonna do is I wanna keep this one around. I want you to see the profile that's being created by that circle alpha. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tap off. And again, let's hit B, E, choose the pro, uh, extrude profile brush. And let's go ahead and choose a circle alpha in here. So I'm gonna choose this circle alpha. And I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag out. Now, again, first thing we're gonna do is under the stroke menu, go to the curve fall off and flip horizontal. So again, we're going thick to thin to thick. Then we're gonna drag this one out. And when we compare these two, you're gonna see when I zoom in, this one is just being generated by whatever this geometry is. And if I wanna swap this out, you know, maybe this uh, torus with a little hole in the middle, go ahead and tap to update this curve. You're gonna see this geometry is what's being stored up here and it's taking that geometry and extruding it down the profile curve that we've created. And of course we can, just like we in, in the previous video, we were doing the curve alpha, you have all the functionality available to you uh, with the stroke menu. So you can update these curves on the fly, you have all these stroke options available to you. So if you wanna know more about curve brushes, go back a video, actually two videos, and that'll take you over uh, basic curve functionality. So now not only are we able to create geometry, very specific geometry that we wanna extrude down a path, also we're able to go up here on the fly and swap these out just by going through here, choosing a different one, tapping to update the curve, and there you go, your profile curve is updated. Now let's talk about ways where you can add to this or you can make your own brush uh, full of profiles you want to use. So let's go out of edit mode. Let's say always switch, hit control N to clear our canvas. And let's just grab a poly mesh star right here, drag it down our canvas, go into edit mode. And then down here at the very bottom of the tool menu under initialize, go ahead and hit Q grid. So this is going to just give us a plane here. And actually let's go to display properties and turn off double. So I just make sure this is the only side I'm looking at here. Now, if you're familiar with the Z Modeler brush, hit B, Z, M to grab the Z Modeler brush. This is a modeling brush tool that you can use in ZBrush to do box modeling. If you're not familiar with it, I do have uh, mentioned before an updated uh, concept for ideation. If you go to these 57 videos and scroll down, there's three videos on Z Modeler polygon action, edge, and point action. So three videos you can watch to get all updated on Z Modeler functionality. However, all we're gonna do is uh, hover over face, hold down the space bar. We'll go ahead and do inset poly group all. We'll inset this. Let's go ahead and hold down alt, drag over these, and then hover over face, say delete a single poly, and then delete those out. So we've made a geometry shape. Now right now, this isn't attached to a brush or anything. It's literally just a tool kind of that we're working on sitting out in space, just an object so, uh, basically. So let's go back to our brush that we were using. So again, BEP is extrude profile. And if we wanna add 
this shape to all these other shapes that are up here, all we got to do is go up here to brush, click from mesh, and that's going to take your mesh and throw it right up here in the brushes. Now, before you did that, you could name it. So instead of, and, and we can, we can fix this, go in here to, you know, we got our brush menu docked underneath here. We go down here to brush, create, and then just hit with that one selected, go ahead and just hit delete mesh. So now before we throw it in there, let's go ahead and rename this mesh with hole in the middle of it. And then one more time, brush from mesh. Now it's named. And now that I got this one selected, I can literally just pull out a curve and it'll have it extruded right along this path. Let's go ahead and hold down S and make our brush size bigger and tap again. And there we go. It's taking this profile that we just made with the exact geometry we did and extruding it down that path. Now, if you want to keep that shape, but you want to update it and let's say, you know what? Let's go ahead and hit the comma key, go into project and load up that demo anime head again. So we're going to completely wipe out uh, everything we were working on, but we still have that brush available to us. So it's like, oh, I'm using this brush. And it's like, you know what? I like this brush. I just want to make a change to it. Well, you can grab that. So two ways you can do that. You can go down here and you can say append a poly mesh 3D. Go ahead and select it. Let's go ahead and turn off the visibility for a head by tapping that eyeball. Let's hit W and with the gizmo activated, anything I tap in here, it's going to steal that geometry. So in fact, we can update any of this. Let's say, you know what? Let's go ahead and turn on polyframe. I like this one, but I want a hole in the middle because I want it to be like a, a empty wire. So I go ahead and steal this geometry. I'm going to make some changes. So again, in the Z modeler brush, BZM, I'm going to hold down alt. I'm just going to paint the circles that I want to get rid of and then hover over face, delete a single poly. And now we'll go back to select our brush. Here's our extrude profile brush. And one more time, we're just going to say brush. Well, first let's rename it. Wire with hole. And then under your brush options, create. I'm sorry, brush from mesh, throws it right at the end. And now you've basically added that updated shape. Now there is a Z plugin you can download called the IMM extractor. If you use this on a brush that has a bunch of IMM options, it'll go through and extract all of those with different sub tools. Now let's say you wanted to make your own brush and we're gonna start with wire with hole. Well, what we can do is we can say, this extrude profile brush opens up with ZBrush and I want to have my own brush with a bunch of my own uh, geometry that I want to extrude through. But I'm going to use this as a, as a way to start. So I'm going to go through here, I'm going to say clone that brush off. So now we have that original brush up here and then at the very bottom we have extrude profile one is what it's basically named it. Now uh, I do, let's say I do want to keep some of these. So I can go through here and I can determine like, okay, underneath brush create, I can just go through here and I can just start deleting meshes out of this brush. But you know what? I want to keep that uh, Taurus here. I'm going to skip that one and I'm just going to keep hitting delete until I get to the shape 06. And then I'm going to skip that one and then keep hitting delete until I get to that very last one. So now I've got a brand new mesh and I want to just keep adding variants to this. And you know what? It may be a little bit easier with our Z modeler brush to kind of work with this a little bit thicker at first. I'm gonna hover over a face. We're gonna say Q mesh polygroup all. We're gonna pull out a little bit of thickness. And then on the inside here, let's go ahead and alt mark. Just some very varying ones in here. We're gonna hover over that face. And again, we're gonna Q mesh polygroup all and we're just gonna pull that in a little bit. And then on these ones, we're gonna hover over an edge and let's go ahead and turn off perspective as well. So, you know, you see we're working on a flat surface here. I'm gonna hover over this edge. We're gonna go ahead and say bevel edge loop complete. We're gonna bevel this side bevel this side and then we're going to hold down alt and drag over these faces and then again hover over face q mesh polygroup ball and just pull these through and that'll go ahead and get rid of that geometry and you know what now that i look at this i don't like these either so i'm going to go ahead and alt <laughs> tap those and then just drag those through and get rid of them so let's say this is my new profile curve now this has thickness to it i just want this one purple side here. So two ways I can get rid of that. I can hold that control shift and just tap that poly group and the rest will disappear. And then like we did early in the earlier videos, uh, tool, geometry, modify topology and delete hidden. And if it's difficult to select a poly group, like say you have very simple geometry, you can also just go to the side, hold down control shift and alt. And then uh, that'll get rid of those that you dragged over and then do the exact same thing. Geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Now you have a new profile curve. Go back to that new brush you made brush from mesh you've got two new profile curves and if you want to save this brush just go in here to brush save as and if you always want it to start up when zbrush starts up you can throw it into your c program files pixel logic zbrush 2021 z startup brush presets but if you just want to grab it every once in a while i throw it into zbrush 2021 
Z brushes. You can see I have a, a custom folders in here. You can throw them in any folder you want. You can make a new one. I'm gonna throw it in here under IMM and we'll just call this test extrude. So if I ever want this again, next time I start up ZBrush, all I gotta do is hit the comma key, go in here to brush, go back down here to my IMM folder, double click it. And you can see there it is. There's my test extrude brush. You just double click it and it'll go ahead and throw it right at the bottom of your brush menu. Now, because it's a curve brush, all the same curve features, like I said before, the previous two videos we went over, all of that still applies to this brush. So if you're new to curve brushes, you want a refresher, go back to videos and watch those. Now on my YouTube channel, I do have a lot of videos on controlling curves. And in ZBrush 2021.5, they did build in curves helper into the stroke menu. So you can actually use these spheres to control where your curves are gonna go. There's another method you can do uh, use to control curves. Let's go out of edit mode and hit control N to clear our canvas. Let's go grab out of our tool palette here. We'll grab a sphere, drag it on our canvas, go back into edit mode, hit make poly mesh 3D, hit W. Let's go ahead and stretch this out here. And let's hold down control shift and we're gonna go through here and we're gonna use a slice curve. And I'm gonna change this out again so we can see it a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice right down this mesh right here. And you're gonna see it's gonna leave me a geometry ring right around here. So if we wanna put a curve around this, there's two ways we can do it. Over here under frame mesh, we can either keep polygroups on and it's gonna look at your object and go, okay, we have two polygroups here. So I'm gonna frame the border between those polygroups, frame mesh. Now we have a curve right along here. Alternatively, let's hit control Z, uh, hold down control shift, tap to isolate this polygroup and you could say frame my open border. So now we can frame that mesh. We can hold down control shift and tap to bring our geometry back. But again, we've put a mesh all along this border frame here. So now let's go to that other brush, BE extrude profile. So BE2 is extrude profile two. And this brush works the exact same as the previous one. However, uh, intensity and size is off. So it's just gonna be one one width profile, just taking this and going right down the tube here. So if we go through here and we say, yeah, choose any of these, you can choose this one here and you can tap on there. This is a way to kind of put a nice decorative frame around an object if you wanted to. And again, hold down uh, S and make your brush size smaller and then tap again. And that'll update uh, the curve here. Another thing you can do, if you, again, if you wanna delete this curve, you can tap on your object to delete it or go in here to stroke curve functions delete and while this is unmasked, that last IMM thing we just threw on there is the unmasked part. I go down here to split, unmask points. So now this is its own separate subtool. And if you remember from the ZBrush 4R8, ZBrush 4R8, what's new playlist? This goes into all the Boolean functionality, the live Boolean functionality that the ZBrush introduced. So go up here to live Boolean, turn that on. Go ahead and set this to subtractive, turn off polyframe. And now you're gonna see we have a live Boolean cut in. So very easily we're able to go through, frame a mesh border, use this as a subtractive mesh. And in fact, let's go in here to BI brush insert IMM Boolean. And because this is already subtractive, if we hit the M key or we go up here and we start grabbing some of this stuff, we can go through here and start dragging these things out and using these as live Booleans. And they're live, which means I can hit W and use the gizmo to go through here and pull these in or out or scale them up or down as needed. In fact, with the gizmo active, I can go through here and swap these on the fly to see which live Boolean I might like better. So I think, oh, that's pretty cool looking. Go ahead and put this in our mesh, scale as needed. And there you go. So again, if you want more information on that, ZBrush 4R8, what's new, goes all over the live Boolean functionality. But you can see, if we go back to BE2 or the Brush Extrude, extrude Profile 2, uh, these are really cool for kind of going through here and just dragging on your mesh. So as we're adding this stroke to this already subtractive mesh, and we go ahead and just keep updating, updating it, it's gonna go ahead and just keep cutting through. And in fact, if we wanna change that profile, just swap that profile out, tap to update your curve, and you'll get different cut in panel lines uh, on your profile there. So again, just keep dragging through here, swapping these things out with whatever profile you'd like, tap to update the curve, make your brush size bigger or smaller to go through here. And again, just tap to update your curve on the fly using live Boolean. So you get some very cool effects going through here and just swapping these uh, brushes out.